Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Phil from Zade Comics, the uh, writer and creator of Magic Cop and the Lost Pages. We are back today uh, with another awesome interview with one of the freshest campaigns to hit Indiegogo. They just launched uh, a few days ago, and uh, none other than the Cat Pappy and Mum themselves, Shane Davis and Yanzi Lin. What's up, guys? What is going on? How's it going? It's going. It's going. It's going. We're excited to be here. You've been on my channel so much. I couldn't wait to get on here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we do uh, We do interviews all the time, usually once a week for with uh, CG creators talking about their uh, Indiegogo campaigns. Um, so, yeah, I really wanted to get you guys on here to talk about this book because the book you guys are doing is so kind of fresh and unorthodox to what's been going on recently, mm. I would say, in comics in general yeah. um it's really uh an interesting way you guys are doing it promoting it putting it out you guys have a bunch of awesome um like extras and pins you guys we're going to be talking about uh but on here what we usually do is kind of like introduce you guys to the audience um so they can know where you're coming from and how you got into all this and then we talk about your book and you know uh, yeah, there's uh, we got Andino in the chat. It says busy night. There's a yeah, there's a lot of streams going on. I know Frega's streaming, doing his drawing thing. Uh, Edwin Acevedo in the chat. Hello, brother. How's it going? Mm. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. So, um, Shane, you, uh, I would say, you're an industry pro. I don't know how many other people would say that. Uh, that's, that's what people like to say i, I mean yeah. i mean i've worked in comics for like uh 18 years um Long time. well it's weird some of that was licensing artwork for dc comics so i think that's the whole eight i don't know if that maybe is longer than 18 years if i counted that i, so I don't know the I, difference between comics and then licensing work like uh, that, like ads and stuff no, it's like the product images of Batman you'll see on like a coloring Andrew book. Bottom. Well, yeah, uh, they can. I end am up about everywhere. shaving Jim Lee. Oh yeah, yeah. So you right, even at one point, Jim Lee? yeah, the uh, DC was trying to uh, make up some lost time on my contract where they were keeping me out of work when I was working on the Earth One book, and uh, they weren't meeting my contract obligations because my editor wasn't trying to get me other work in the office. He wanted to hoard me. And keep me focused on that book. So we ended up with uh, a negative remainder I was owed. So really quick, nobody really talked to me about this. But what was happening is they were like, hey, Shane, we really need to. We have these all-star Batman images of Jim Lee's. I don't know if you remember much about that book from memory. But a lot of it was him. He was stubbly the whole time. When they weren't in the Batmil Batmobile with Robin for three issues. Um, Batman was stubbly. Yeah, well, his face was stubbly. That was the whole thing. And um, he was always running in the rain. So, you know, Scott Williams, um, they were doing rain effects and you know, line artwork. So it was basically like, you know, when um, an artist does that, there's a couple of tricks. They either do a whiteout thing or uh, they sometimes take a razor and they, they nick the paper um, to get a raindrop effect. So basically there was all these Batmans that the images were broke with rain droplets and he needed a shave and they were wanting to take all these Jim Lee images and put them on products. So they were like, Hey, we owe you some money and we need this done. Can you, uh, can you uh, shave? Let me look up Batman underwear. <laughs> it's funny. There's some Batman underwear. So I basically had to go through and touch this up just to make up a remainder for money. So and it's weird because I see these all the time. Around. Yeah. I'll I'll look one up here a minute and show it because it's funny. And so you did art that went on underwear. You're saying that's what well, the licensing is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they go everywhere, but it's they end up in the weirdest places. This is one of the weirdest ones. But I have my own Batman uh, images that um, you know, that are on products. That's how I ended up with the this shave Jim Lee job. Here, I'm gonna share my screen here. Yeah. All right, um, pop, pop, pop. But it, it, the stuff uh, kind of, so some of the images that were my images I did early on in my career, and then that kind of got me in the offices and got me some filling issues on Batman and stuff. But it was also weird because uh, people were like, well, we don't know if we can trust you with a deadline. So you see the underwear here, right? I shared my oh, screen. Yeah. 
So right on the crotch. See, but if you look at that <laughs> mouth, that's not a Jim Lee mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so this was from all, mouth. so so they, they were really trying to repurpose all these Jim Lee All Star Batman and Robin images to just become licensing things in DC. It's so it's funny. It's just funny to see this on the, you know, that I had to shave Jim Lee. It was just funny. It made up the remainder of what they owed me for. Uh, not giving me other cover. I mean, it's funny that, that my editor basically d was a real asshole and he didn't want me so going to other editors. It was the Eddie Braganza guy. So um, they just didn't want me running around to other editors because, yeah. you know, he was trying to hoard me to his office. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I shaved uh, Jim Lee's Batman. That's awesome. It's a great story. It's something that the chat didn't know, even though Andino says that we already know who Shane Davis is. Well, but you didn't know I shaved. So. You didn't know I shaved Batman. How many people can say they shaved Batman? Right. That's I would say we should just call you Shaved Davis from now on. Shaved Davis. Yeah. Right. Uh, I hope that's not his porn star name or something. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gross. Yanzi, I needed the money. I was in college. I was young, and I needed the money. You're gonna yeah, have you have a huge forget. college debt and everything, right? Mm. There you go. Well, I didn't say it was employed a lot i just it was a career path not everything works out you know what i'm saying already um, bickering like a married couple which brings us to the next topic everybody know who, hmm. who shane is but yanzi where you have now you're this internet personality all oh, the pgs boy. falling in love with you mm -hmm. um i want to know out, guys how, watch out how you got wrapped up onto this because it's you're a, a comic fan also i assume because you really liked uh when you like really liked red hood is that correct mm -hmm, yep i would and, say i'm not so much a fan of comics in the past 10 years though i mean i came yeah. in at a really good time you know where it was like the infinite crisis identity crisis stuff and then of course there was all the lantern color wars and all that i mean that was the really great time you know but after that it's just yeah. kind of it just went all just went downhill you know like crisis after crisis after crisis and i was like geez please, what are you a woman going into menopause or something so i was like hey dude enough mm. i mean yeah, actually i collected a whole bunch of the red to end out law stuff rockerford was working on that but pretty much i'll say that was close to my last mainstream comics that i collected i don't know how real is my geek cred though but i don't have a tattoo that is uh another character's name sick at least so you don't have a Sh uh, shazam tattoo no, I mean I have a I have a weird Terminator type tattoo thing, but that's about it. Terminator? Yeah, you no, know you, you know uh, that saying that's that saying in Terminator. You know there is no fate, but what we make. I got that tattooed on me. Yeah. Right. And you would think it's like all poetic, you know? Maybe it's some, you know, like something from some great piece of literature. And I'm like, what does that mean? And she's like, it's from Terminator, you asshole. And I'm like. <laughs> It, in all right. fairness, there's fucking butterflies next to it. So you wouldn't think butterflies come from Terminator. <clears throat> you know, only only Yandi would take a quote from Terminator and put a butterfly next Dude, to it. The butterflies represent Leon and Ada. That's Which is part. another property altogether, not even Terminator. So I know, how right? the fuck <laughs> would anybody put this together? She's one of a kind. She's I am one, one of a kind. kind. But she's uh, doing... A lot of work on Starlight Cat. She's doing some co-writing, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yep, I'm co-writing the book. It's kind of like a, you know, I think we sit down together, we put the story idea together, and we just decide, okay, how are we gonna do this part, that part? Yeah. We basically decide we we decide the meat of the story, then we start dialoguing it together. We do some back and forth. That's what happens. That's how we do it, at least. And That's she cool. also inks the book. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, did you ink that um, gorilla piece? I could have swore I saw a video of you inking that uh, mm -hmm. months ago. Yeah, I did ink that piece as well. Yeah, that was really cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I wish I knew an inker or I had a girlfriend that could ink. No, you don't. You could that pick for You could go look I for don't. one. <laughs> put, it in, put, it in your, put it in your Tinder profile and say looking for a, a, a woman that can double as an inker as well. And she like, <laughs> what do you mean by inker? Do you want, you want me to poke you with a you know, tattooist pen or something? And she'd be like, and you'd be like nah, like man. She's like a squid, right? A human mm. female squid. You can ink me. All right, anyway, you watch, Starlight Cats. All right, you went off the rails with that. <laughs> yeah, that was, so, that was, how, 
So and this is a uh, awesome start to the campaign. Uh, I wanted to know when did you guys come up with this idea? I remember you saying that it had a lot to do with your uh, creation of Dexstar and where did like the team form uh, the idea of the team come about and the idea of the uh, little <coughs> young protagonist? Hmm. Um, I see. think I could I could safely say that the idea pretty much started for me saying, "Dude, your cat's a lantern. I want my cat to be a, a superhero too." Yeah, well, we were pen pals, so she kind of saw Dexter before Dexter um, anybody else did. Because I would always show her. Um, we were friends online. I would show her whatever I was working on. So she kind of she probably one way or the other saw like the pencils of me putting Dexter in right away. So um, we always thought Dexter was super popular, even like another cat story we did that was in a, like a two-page story in Superman Earth 1 Volume 2 took off like on Imgur and stuff. So we were like, we should do a cat book. You know, a lot of people at, uh, during especially Blackest Night was asking for a Dexter one-shot and DC would never allow it. Um, the publisher... Missed opportunity. Yeah, missed opportunity. But funny enough, in Super Pets books, they would do Dexter one-offs and stuff like that and for kids, the Super Pets books. So I I, I, we, I kept thinking in my head, well, how do you make it? Because that would be the problem. How do you make a cat story, right? Like, how do you get that yeah. together? So we ended up with <laughs> talking this out and thinking of, like, what if it was a cat team and what if it was them versus space? Because what did they fight? It'd be like rats in space, you know? So we came up with all that, but then it's so alien. Like, I don't think the cat story resonates unless you have a human, like for the reader to see the cats through. It's like a yeah, weird. For sure. So, so I need that grounding rod for the reader to build a connection to the Definitely. cat. It was just a book with cats. So we ended up with this story with, um, uh, of course, I've lived in Singapore, and I thought the Merlion was this cool symbol. So we came up with this story because the Merlion mythos is kind of weird. Um, it's not really. I had never heard of creature. that, like mythological creature or whatever. Well, it's it's more. It looks like it would be, but it's really just a symbol. There is no mythology really behind it, besides um, yeah. what what was it? What who found well, it? Well, just this. Uh, it's a Malaysian prince that found it Singapore. He he claims that you know he saw a lion. When he when he came to Singapore, so he was well at the point of Singapore wasn't called Singapore, it was called Tamasic. He saw and he thought, well, that's a sign from the gods that you know this is an auspicious location to find uh, to find a new city. And so he started to build a village there. And because Singapore started as a fishing village, that's how you have the fish tail for the Malayan. Right. Really cool. Oh, I'm so, excited to see that character. Yeah. In the book, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I ch I took a lot of liberties, you know, redesigning it. Um, there is like a jewel crest that's on the Merlion statue. Mm -hmm. The Merlion's only ever been depicted in like um, what type of stone is that? It's just concrete. It's like a white stone. It's, it's, I don't even really know what material they make it out of. It's like right. a white stone type material, white rocks. You know, a lot of those statues that you see, it's not marble, but you know that it's that weird slightly porous white rock you see so first we had to come up with uh, what color he would be and uh he's an aquatic beast of course and uh i he's normally just a lion head and then a fish body but i wanted to add some paws to him and stuff because oh, i really sure. wanted um him to be able to like boast up and roar and stuff and do things like that and uh <laughs> kind of push his chest out and stuff um be a little bit more majestic plus i just thought it was more of the mermaid type equation that they obviously were pulling from um gotta have arms yeah yeah so we, we ended up with because we needed a human character we ended up with um basically a a girl that gets a jewel grafted onto her. So I, we kind of had all these pieces and just put them into place and uh, the story fleshed out. I mean, we, we, we've been probably back and forth on this story for three years, I think. Nice. So like it's had a long brew time, you know? So what seems like very thought out and complicated, we've had so many variations of this book 
where we've um it's like like i said uh, bounce ideas back and forth back and forth never really committing to anything until we're finally like, okay you know what we're gonna do it that's it <laughs> so in the book the merlion so first off the cats aliens it's like a home world the cats um you know they're at war with the mice there's a uh, something with the varric and the rat aliens and, and the, the meses and all that um a, a dark force the merlion would have been the cat's god and um the story's kind not the in the on the um the the ashcan book we're showing you we're basically going to come in with the merlion like running retreating and injured and dying and he 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 chooses to go the furthest he can get, you know, away from his opponent, and he goes to Earth, burns up in yeah. the atmosphere, dies, disperses these jewels, and if they ever come back together, you know, the that he'll be resurrected, like retreat to fight another day type thing. So um, Barnaby and some of the other cats, they found their jewels, or in that same ash can, we're going to show Barnaby and his brother find the jewel he has. Um, with Rebecca though, hers is in her grandmother's necklace, which again is the Merlion landing in Singapore. That jewel was there. Her, you know, she's from Singapore. So you see how all this all of a sudden kind of comes together. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. It's, is it kind of like connect with that lore that the prince thinks he saw the Merlion? Well, he the saw a lion. That's what the law says. So I, we could tie it in some way. I mean, it, in fact, it actually kind of works together now that you mention it. Kind of <laughs> what I'm wanting to do is when he lands and he dies, that there is like a totem there in its place of what the Singapore statue Merlion is, yeah. but the tools have spread. So there will be like, I'm going to try to connect it that way in the story, but because the, <laughs> the Merlion is more of a symbol and not a mythical creature, yeah. I'm kind of building a lore off of it you know, that fits this story, but it's really cool that, but that, you know, I'm able to do that. Uh, the thing though, I need a hiccup. I can't be easy breezy. They got all of the jewels and that's where Rebecca comes in because she, it was supposed to go to a chosen cat warrior. Instead it went to her and she's, so there's a prophecy that the end of this war will be this last jewel bearer and all of this, which is her, but in the prophecy, she, she's messing she's messing up the prophecy you know yeah. um i didn't think about it to the other night but i'm like well there's a lot of similarities between the first matrix movie with this in a weird way the plot kind of in in some some sense um it, there's a not just just the setup where you know like uh with neo's character where he can't be the one but he's the one and he's messing up the prophecy and blah 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 it's kind of kind of like that but she's really messing it up it's supposed to be a cat that has the jewel not her and they can't right. get the off her and that's part of the story oh this is uh really cool the uh i'm excited because you i see a lot of things that are awesome in this you know you, this is my favorite thing about these campaigns is when people are running with an idea that they've had for a really long time um because i think that builds character is the best you know you mm. get to know what they're going to do in different situations that you put them in if you've been working with them for a while and kind of building them so i think i always say like if someone's going to launch a campaign or you write a story and stuff you don't rush it even if it takes a while keep working at it so your characters are going to feel as real as possible uh, some of it's like, like brew time. I, it's some some yeah. of it's you're not actually forcing yourself because those moments of clarity and putting a story together, you can't. I don't know. Like, I mean, isn't that like the story of why so many creative writers under pressure end up alcoholics or something? Like they're trying to <laughs> wow. they're trying to find, no, it's serious. They're trying to find inspiration. I mean, a lot of people, Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, he was addicted to opium or morphine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's tons of stories of writers that were, had addictions or vices yeah. or something that because they're trying to trigger inspiration. And, and sometimes I, I I agree and disagree with that. Like, I'm not pro substance abuse or anything. But what I'm saying is, like, sometimes there's a point of pushing yourself to get something done. And some and I think with stories and ideas, like sometimes brew time is what you need you just need it floating around in the background for a while not really thinking about it and maybe you you know you're in the shower 
or you're grocery shopping or something. Suddenly you know, inspiration. Issue, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. in the background where you're not trying to force it, you know. And and the weird thing is like you'll have an idea, but it's like, yeah, but now that doesn't work. Why would this happen? And then all of a sudden you think, well, I had this and now that, yeah, now like one of the characters um, there next to Barnaby is Princess Lamore. And we had this whole issue. Well, how do we bring, you know, Rebecca and Starlight cats into the Royal, you know, the, the Royal cats, you know, yeah. high council. And, you know, they're talking about what to do and the prophecy and all this. It's like, oh, it's simple. You know, a princess is on the team. You know, that's your gateway to it. I mean, some of these are really simple solutions, but, you know, they didn't occur to me till later, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that done a million times. So if you have that one character be a princess, then all of a sudden that's your segue into that situation you need in your story. You just kind of start engineering. And once you get that decent base of this connects to there, this connects to this. Like, you know, we have mapped out where we're ending on the first issue. Everybody keeps asking, like, oh, this is like Voltron. And I'm like, no. Oh, this is like Captain Planet. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not going to answer what it's like because everybody's like, well, how does Malayan come back? And it's like, well, there, that's the ending of the book, you know. Well, then does, one. I don't know if you want to spoil this, but does any of the cats have the power of the Indian kid from Captain Planet, mm. which was the element of love? They don't have any of those. They just blast giant <laughs> Right. some fly out their chest i know i don't show that in any of the campaign artwork <laughs> but these guys are like flying and streaking and shooting laser beams out of their chest so they're more of an offensive thing um than anything i, I, I kind of want to think of them as like green lanterns except they're not making constructs they're just like pew, 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 pew. yeah so it's like dbz a lot like DBZ, except yep. it's SMG. coming off their jewels. Except for Barnaby, um, the way he's got his tail propped up there like a scorpion, there's like a little bit of a a, a little laser, laser pointer type yeah. thing. So a lot of times they're shooting like lasers out of their tails. I mean, it, of course, that doesn't work with the fat cat because his tail is so stubby. stubby. Yeah, so. Everybody loves Salty, man. Yeah, I know. Salty balls. Salty wow. balls. He's uh the Morris the cat guy. He uh sells a cat treat. He's the American fat cat. And uh Jelly Bean is the cat that's um his best buddy. And uh, you know, we put the little guy with the fat guy and they play off of one another, you know. So yeah. it's, it's it's a classic <laughs> trope, you know. Nothing nothing genius there. I didn't do anything creative with that. It's it's classic, but you know, um, it's kind of the Cartman and South Park type attitude type character. I mean, it's been done a million times. I can't, I can't really give, I can't take any credit for Salty I, besides the name Salty and that he sells Salty Balls. That's the only, only. Honey, I this. came up with the name Salty. Give oh, me wait. credit. The name Salty. But here's an Come interesting on. thing. If you share my screen, Phil. Um, yeah, I would love to. So, this is so, really cool. so this is uh, <laughs> Yanti's designs that she never likes to show for the cat. So it's interesting. We de she designed most of these cats um, in their cat form, and then I designed their superhero versions. Yeah, we went, and this kind of shows like the iterations. We how long we've worked on this and the different levels it's went through. But um, as you can see, our human character at one time was kind of like an anime kid like a boy and then it we we would rework the story and rethink you know what's the character is saying at certain points interactions and time and then probably we the cats were the solid thing that we always had off the bat but our main human protagonist was the thing we were struggling with for the longest time yeah. now if we had just hit the gas and pushed forward this book would be a bit different and i'm not so sure if it would really flow the way we want it to flow um because we really wanted a spicy attitude character and it doesn't really work with a boy with a bunch of cats being angry it just doesn't work but for some reason having a you know uh an angry little girl that has issues with friend making friends in school and getting along with others it seems yeah. to work if it's a guy then you just think he's an a-hole and mm -hmm. like he could be portrayed as a bully. And then if he breaks down and is softer at the end, then it's like, oh, this guy was just a wimp. Right. But if it's a girl, right. she could be sassy. And yeah. And then, you know, of course, she's going to have that, that uh, trope of the softer side because she's female. You know? So, I mean, that's really just uh, 
kind of show how long we've been working on this and on what levels. Yeah, no, this this concept art is awesome. I uh, I know you guys are going to do uh, kind of like a behind the scenes part of I think your ash can, right? Oh, Just some of it, yeah. No, well, yeah, he's we're, we're... Ball, I need to put these pages in there. He's like, Yandy, you gotta show the yeah, origins you, of how that gets. You have to, yeah. I mean, I when we did um Magic Cop, we have concepts from years ago that my brother did, and he's like, I, These are trash, I don't want to put these in, but it's to, to just see how where everything started. I think that's really cool. So, she didn't just stop with the mouse here that um. Let me see if my cursor, this mouse guy. Yeah. There's more, and she actually designed a barricade. So a lot of these designs were done in her by her style, and then I kind of did it in my filter and rendering. And I, I think that's why this book kind of looks fresh. For It doesn't look like something I've done before. I know that yeah. sounds weird, but I didn't design them 100% myself. Like So there's yeah, things like if you, way, if, way if you look at... If you look at Princess Lamore here, I would just draw a normal cat and try to force you to think she's um, a female. But there's things that Yanzi was doing with her cheeks and the tough yeah. hair that's kind of like a classic Disney Rescue Rangers type animation style or Jungle Book style or something like that. Aristocrat. Aristocrat. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I wouldn't have done that. But then I incorporated it into my style, which is a lot more realistic, and it still worked. And um, I guess that, I don't I don't know. That might be why the project has a different charm to it than, like, say, when I drew Dexter. That's a tricky thing too. I would say is um, with this book, um, which was a big hurdle, is having five cats, but make sure they they all have okay. unique body types. Well, four cats. I'm sorry. Four cats, unique body types and attitudes. <coughs> right. Um, so that's all that's the a little tricky. In cats. Yeah. Body positive. Body positive. <laughs> yeah. Body diversity. Yeah, diversity. I actually uh, I showed um, I a friend from overseas uh, my comic, The Lost Pages, and I showed her some characters. She's in the UK, and she's like, "Oh, it's cool. I just wish you had more body diversity." Mm. I'm like, all right. Mm. Well, I well that that had I wouldn't say I was trying to be body diversity. I've I've drawn whenever you have a team book and the characters are together though, you kind of need body diversity. <laughs> if you look at Jim Lee's X Men, if you look at um any oh, of Jim I Lee's team books, <laughs> you always end up with the big guy in the back. That was a token. 90s well, yeah, con thing contrasting that, silhouettes uh, yeah makes everything much more interesting on a graphical standpoint yeah yeah i think there's it's so weird people say that and it's like we've been doing body sensitive shit since the 90s what are you talking about we've been yeah. doing body sensitive shit since like fantastic four you know skinny guy stretching oh gosh, a, a, a body 60. on fire a, a woman invisible and a giant rock monster i mean that's yeah. pretty diverse this uh deck star will always be the best kitty Asus. No, or like cats said, will be the bestest kitties. kitties. Dexter is good kitty. Starlight cats are best kitties. Yeah, best that's kitties, how it works. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it, it was a, it was definitely a combination of uh, wanting um, to kind of capitalize on people's interest with um, Dexter and the the, the furball. I keep wanting to say snowball because the cat was white, but furball story that went kind of viral on Imgur a little bit like a Superman cat story we did in the middle of uh, the volume two and uh, it just I, once I saw both those things in my career get that type of response I was like yeah I'm just gonna try a cat book like I'm, I, I made enough cat stories for DC Comics and they make a lot of money off my cat it's like We'll try it she actually wanted me to pitch us to DC at one point in time and I said no it's I know right I said it was if too only, good to if, pitch. If, if, you know, if, if luckily, you know, luckily he stopped me. I was like, nah, Andy, it's too good. We can't give it to DC. I'm like, okay. Yeah, she brought it up. There was a pit, bit of time here where she's like, we should pitch this. And she would leave it alone and she would bring it up again. And I just, I'm like, I'm, I've already given them my cat. I'm not yeah. going to give them more cat. cats. My cat. At this point, it's Barnaby's my cat. <laughs> and it was the <laughs> thing, too, because I was like, well, we should do create our own with this. And, um, then I'm looking around because I'd worked at Image and stuff, and I kind of understand the image pr approval process a bit and the things that they're looking for. And you can kind of tell by the crowd that kind of works at Image. 
and and it's like eh, there's not kids with identity politics or with blue hair in it and stuff and yeah i don't think image would even if they did publish it i don't know if they would know how to market it you know so we then talked about crowdfunding it for a while and then um i was like yeah i'm kind of digging kind of disagreeing with a lot of sjw shit going on in comics and stuff and i you know kind of made the decision to be comics game and I'm, we were like i had a couple of projects we wanted to do um coming over to cg and we basically made a decision on which one would be the first one so well i think this one definitely stakes you guys in your own area you know it, it doesn't overlap with anything else um, you could, and that's, I think that's the awesome thing about CG is there's so many different types of stories going on, different art styles. And this is just another one that is its own thing and jumps out at people when they're looking through the catalog of everything that we're doing over here. Um, which I think is great. Uh, definitely setting your guys apart from your, anyone else over here. Uh, I wanted to say hail to everybody in the chat. We got a uh, Sim who's in the chat. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, if you're just tuning in, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We do interviews like this all the time, talking about awesome crowdfunded books. Um, and yeah, and check out Starlight Cats. Uh, this is, uh, I wanted to show you guys, this is the first time that I really got to know Dexstar. Uh, I was a big mm. uh, fighting game guy back in the day, where like five years ago. And in the Injustice 2 game, <coughs> Uh, he was featured with Atrocitus. He was like one of his, um, what would they call it, his trait move, where he could pull Dexter out and he would just destroy you. It was super mm -hmm. cheap and angered everybody that played that game because Atrocitus was really <laughs> he, good. He was game. OP. He was. I, I, I come from the era where I just call him a limit brick. A limit <laughs> brick. Well, no, because he had two moves, right? He could be either offensive or de defensive. Yeah, well, he, he can yeah. shoot his laser or put a shield around Atrocitus, and you can get huge combos with it. Um, and what you'd have to do is basically wait out Dexdar until he goes away and then go and try to kill Atrocitus. But then when he would come back, it was a whole other a whole other game playing with him. It was, uh, it's, it's, it's really weird, guys, because this, um, this is like a CG tag team. Yeah, you're just CG getting your it. ass beat by CG. So, Ooh, if I, any SJWs <laughs> are getting their ass kicked, it's like that Shane Davis and Ethan. Of course, I'm yeah, the cat, but yeah, yeah. Ethan created <laughs> Trostus. Yeah, got, got it's, star. Yeah, it's um, kind of weird. So he uh, and one of my buddies uh, got pretty high in a tournament over here uh, with Atrocitus. So yeah, it's, uh, he is a little overpowered, but there was a character like that in a Mortal Kombat game before that. Uh, there was a character that had like a little guy, a big guy with a little girl on his back or something like that. Yeah. Ferritor. Yeah. Ferritor. Like yeah. Master Ferritor. Blaster. Yeah. Master Blaster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the first Injustice, Sinestro kind of had a similar thing, but it was like just this like little, um, floating ball turrets that would come out and it would shoot lasers. Uh, it was he was such a great zoner in that game. So mm -hmm. zoning tactics like that are uh, crazy. But Starlight Cats, and I love the you're kind of right. Well, I wouldn't say ashes, but you're from that first um, inspiring moment of Dexstar. You're kind of taking that back and putting it into Starlight Cats. I dig that. Yeah, I, I definitely am. I uh, I don't know. This is, I mean, it's a. It took a lot of inspiration from also the the one of my favorite movies, Spirited Away, um, and the Last Starfighter. But I guess you could also say the Matrix. So it's it's a combination of a lot of things. So sure, uh, it, I mean, the, it's not just the cat aspect of it. I mean, I I mean, I think I had I like the idea of crazy, you know, anthro not anthro morphic but like anatomy based cats like not exaggerated where they're you know they have human features and stuff doing like action adventure things i think you yeah. know how like everybody likes the jumping cat pose freeze framed and they're like look at the funny cat pose i always felt like that was a lot of the charm with dexter in a way 
is that he wasn't um like an alien that kind of looks like a cat he right, was he a like cat a you know or... yeah yeah humanoid type version um and they've actually kind of made some bad Dexter toys doing that. Every now and then they'd veer off and try to give him like a, like the Mattel did where he had like, he has like a six pack. You look have me, that computer. <laughs> you can hold it. it up. Yeah. Like that. Like that just looks like a midget in the cat suit. Like that doesn't look like a cat, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, there's things like that. And even Lego did it for, <clears throat> I think it was Lego Batman three. And then they did the villains game. Oh my and, god, Lego uh, Batman 3 just slap a cat hit on a regular Lego body. It was that yeah, that's what they did. And then they changed Lego eventually said no, we need to actually make a you know, use the Lego cat to be Dexter. So it didn't look so weird next to Atrocitus because the, the Lego Atrocitus is kind of like Hulk size. So it was just like a midget in a cat suit rolling around the, the incredible Hulk. Um, but it looked weird compared to standing next to Blaze or something because they literally were the same body type, if that makes sense. So now Lego, yeah. though, in Lego villains and even in their Lego movies, now they have like a Lego cat that uses Dexter. So I've seen a lot of people, whether it's in video games, like even if it's Legos or that I mean, toy. You, image it, Bill. you can just uh, see copy and paste stuff. Ugh. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. So when yeah. you guys make Legos, they're not going to be um, midget cats. Hmm. I would no, hope so. I don't I don't that. Happen. Yeah. Hang on. She put in the links in the uh, private chat. And here's the other one, which is the cat version of Dexter, like the proper cat version. Whoa. So like. That this one's kind of weird. They go Batman three is like, hey, so, look at that. So it's Batman, so Batman would be like eye to eye with this guy, and one's yeah. supposed to be a cat. So that just looks like a wear cat. Like it literally looks like a a man that turned into a cat, or somebody in a furry suit. Like you know. So here's the. And then that's the new updated Lego version. So I, I guess what I'm saying is even with Legos, they found that like it's not cute unless they're they are actual cats. That's rather the charm. Yeah, because like, then it's Thundercats, right? Yeah, yeah, it becomes something else. So that I mean, uh, which is back to what I did. I'm like, you know, they even at one point in DC they were like, well, let's make it an alien. I'm like, no, it has to be a cat. Nobody's gonna like it unless it's a cat, you know. So um yeah, it's it's uh I guess I have a little research and development on this or trial and error, but at in different areas I've seen this run its course and sure. what works with this so and doesn't, but I kinda had a question story. <laughs> are not are all of these cats aliens or are some from Earth? That find the <sighs> Okay, so the cats aliens actually can walk on their hind legs. <laughs> <laughs> so the way the cats aliens blend in with the earth cats is they uh just crawl on all fours <laughs> so, all right it's it it's we do, a, we have and, a, we do have our, no i mean we have this romantic backstory remember that one of them yeah. came to earth many years ago and you know met, 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 met this girl cat of egypt and together they created the earth species of cats remember wait so oh, yeah so all <laughs> all cats on Earth are aliens? No, no, no. Just the majority of them. <laughs> All right. I mean, just the majority of them. I, I like that romantic backstory, though. That's cool. So uh, there was something else there with the cats. That's funny, though. Oh, the reason they worship the Merlion, if they say, well, what makes the Merlion so great? And they're like, because he, he's not afraid of water. Like, see, you almost spit. You see, it's funny. No, no, that's the funny thing. See, in the Merlion, in Singapore, the Merlion really just spits water. So it's like, he does, it's not, he's just not scared of, he's just not, not scared of water. He's also spitting water out from himself. He's like, Phew. well, so the a reason, the reason for that also is like, um, the uh, Eastern mythology or feng shui stuff, they work in elements a lot, you know. Sure, yeah. Um, so water and moving water is like a feng shui shit. She she can explain that stuff. She, I don't get references half the time in a lot of like oh, overseas movies, it's... like Tai Chi. I would say because in 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 Chinese mythology, dragons are actually you know benevolent creatures, and the dragons are considered the rulers of the sea and the water. So we have kind of built this 
Milan of kind of like a dragon body type. So we're using the whole water element thing with it as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's going to be really cool. Yeah, I want to see more Merlion, Shane. Yes, Get yes, the ash yes. can. Get the ash can. It's going to have the uh, 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 kind of brutal backstory of um, him wounded, bleeding out, like one eye's out and all this stuff. And really, he does it, honey. Well, he crash lands on the moon. He's he's it's his last dying breath, and he sees Earth, and he sees the threat afar, and he makes a decision to sacrifice himself just so, like he could, you know, the the species of cats could live to fight another day, type thing. So All right, you're selling me on it. I'm gonna get the yeah. ash can. Well, awesome. yeah, somebody was asking me if we just sell the ash can on its own, and I'm like, eh, you really need it in the book. Now, here's the interesting thing that we're doing with this, and I'm really kind of taking advantage of the ash can idea versus the book idea is um, the main story, a lot like the Matrix, right? Um, you just you 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 enter that world through Neo, right? Yeah. So. But if you go and you look at the mythos of the Matrix, there's all this backstory there. So that's kind of, we kind of like to pretend our Ashcan story is kind of like the Animatrix in a, a little bit of way where you're kind of seeing the, you know, the the lay of the land of the war and how he ended up in Earth and the jewel, <laughs> jewels being divided. But it's also, to me, um, important that the main story always is through Rebecca's eyes, you know. Even yeah, though well, Barnaby's okay. a major character, it's mainly the two main characters are going to be Barnaby and Rebecca. Barnaby being the orange cat that um, you see her, at, that's a hawker center. That's like a food court in Singapore. That's mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like a, I don't, they're like everywhere in Singapore and it's a big cultural thing of their food and and how Singaporean food so awesome is uh, it's kind of like a mixture. It's, it's like fusion, Asian fusion food, like everything because it's, they have a little bit of everything in it. So like spicy, I don't know. He loves all the spicy curries in Singapore. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of Japanese like spicy chicken. Mm -hmm. Still well, has well, a mixed spicy chicken burger at McDonald's that he cannot get over here in the States. And every time he goes to Singapore, he's like, dude, I got to eat that stuff. Yeah. But it, it's not just that. Well, their chili they use is very uh, unique. It's um, like this red. Um, what, what would you call it? Yanzi? It's like a red chili. Uh, we have all kinds of red chili, basically. Yeah, that they put in everything. <laughs> but uh, it, it, the so basically Barnaby and um Rebecca are like friends after school type thing because she has a problem with making friends in school. She doesn't get along with any kids. And um, if you Barnaby, if you'll notice, like when so when their powers aren't activated, their jewels are actually just collars. They, they just look like a normal cat. Right. Right you here. know, so That's it's a little bit of an activation about. thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. We wanted to have this natural friendship because they're scouting for the fifth jewel, and it just happens to be that it's her grandmother's necklace that nobody knows about. There's not really an energy signature to the jewels. They were able to track, you know, the you know the energy signature of the Merlion to Earth, so they know the jewels are on Earth. They just don't know where they're all located at. So they're definitely looking for like the last jewel that's in Singapore, uh, whereas some of the cats, you know, like um, Salty, you know, he's an American cat and his jewels there. So right now, like where we go in the story, they're kind of like these guardians of Earth still looking for the fifth jewel. So then they can return home and and end the, the Great War. I mean, the cats aren't. So I think of the. Uh, I don't know. The cat's kind of like the rebels in Star Wars and like the Varrican is kind of like the Empire and they're at war, but they they, they know they won't ever win the war because they barely won before with the Merlion and without the Merlion, they definitely can't win this time. So, yeah. so the, the giant rats are trying to get the necklace as well. Yeah, well, then they the prophecy's broken if they can get to it first. Hmm. So it's, um, it's, you know, they're all kind of looking for this, you know, cause they can't collect the jewels if the rats find the last jewel. So, and a lot sure. of that has to do with the thing that injured the Merlion to begin with that almost killed him, killed him before he retreated. So yeah, that, I know that seems like a lot to do in 48 pages. Um, it, 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 it most likely is, but, um, we are carrying, like, we're only really following 
Rebecca, the main book is really just following her getting pulled into this intergalactic war. So we, we paced it out. I've done a lot with graphic novels with, um, I've drawn three OGNs before now. I will say they were all like around a hundred, 110, 128 pages, but I've also done a lot of one shots like yeah. that were 20, anywhere between like 28 pages to 38 pages. I've, I will, that's going to be the interesting thing is I'm trying to build a hybrid model here where I'm in between that. And I, I feel confident because I've, I've also done a lot of single issues that are 22 page stories. Oh, I've done sure. single issues that were just a straight one and done 22 page story. I mean, it's really just pacing and, you know, using uh, your real estate on the page to the best, you know, yeah, keeping in mind page count and uh, <laughs> page turns and stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so when you guys back this, you're getting top quality comic. Story's going to be there, um, and it's all going to be paced within 48 pages. And you guys have you know, plans of doing other Starlight Cats books as well, right? We're wanting to do like between three and four. Um, I'd like to go straight into two um, with you know this hitting a certain fun goal. It makes it possible. So we're, we're hoping that we... We really cross over where, like, as this book's going to the printers, I'm already getting the the artwork together on the next campaign mm-hmm. to launch. So when it's fulfilled awesome. and everybody's opening their books up, you know, knock on wood, everybody will be able to uh, go back. Starlight Cats book two is kind of <coughs> ideally what we want. I think that's a good CG model just for everyone, you know, yeah. um, as people finish one story offer the second um i do have some other stuff though i'm probably gonna re- do and release and um i have an old comic that i drew that i never never did anything with and um i feel like i could build on to it and release it i don't know how i'm gonna do that and when i'm gonna do it because i definitely want to i don't want any hurdles of like well i can't buy another book because i didn't get your first book type thing so i literally have something else but i'm gonna wait till this is fulfilled before i try launching these other things for sure no that, that's a great idea i mean yeah just, just like us we have a bunch of stuff we want to do but that is the you know priority of getting the, the stuff mm-hmm. out to the customers yeah uh, which i, I mean we yanzi knows a lot about fulfillment and um yeah stuff with her with selling toys uh overseas and stuff so we feel very confident about that um and i've dealt with um image books before where where basically when you work you do a a, a creator own book of image you have to put everything together yourself i mean the only thing they do is maybe make a pdf of it they don't letter it they don't do anything they don't even really promote it besides the first issue. So you're really doing everything. So I've been here before, so I kind of understand, you know, um, there's a certain amount of time I'm not going to be drawing pages. I'm going to be, you know, like um, chasing letters down, um, you know, um, putting stuff together, um, pre-press. Wrangling everybody, you know, like herding cats. Looking at, we've already been looking at um, paper samples and stuff from printers. So I kind of know to go ahead and it's not, I'm not getting ahead of myself. Those are just decisions you have to make. So we're coming up on our stretch goal now to uh, do do a better, heavier paper stock, which I'm excited about. Um, And we've laid out some other stretch goals like cards and, um, what, what else did we have, Yanzi? We were thinking of a bookmark, stickers, all this kind of stuff. Honestly, we're thinking <laughs> everything. We were thinking of a fold-up poster. If we can get this campaign to, you know, enough people, I guess. Enough Actually, people. We, don't, we don't print a low quantity or something, you know? Yeah, what, uh, yeah. What size poster were you guys thinking? <laughs> that, I don't know. I, we wanted to do, like, a hang-in-there poster, you know. It's going to be a fold-up poster. Sure. Though. I mean, we can't. I don't think. It, I think it's way too much headache to do those roll-up posters. So it's gonna be a fold-out yeah, poster. Yeah. Yeah. So it was gonna be one of those fold-out posters, but have yeah. it up salty, hanging off a broken branch, maybe with jelly bean hanging on, and it just say hang in there, like just do a straight homage, but a funny fat cat breaking a limb. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what we were wanting to do as a poster. Awesome. Um, we also have some other plans. Um, but it really depends on how the campaign's going, you know, like, yeah, we would love to do a million things and add to the campaign in a million ways, but, uh, it, you know, Time um, 
well, it will. And the more people budget in, uh, put in on the campaign, the more we're able to offer in different tiers, um, and, and drop different things and add on stuff like that. I mean, yeah. a lot of that's really once the campaigns go, or, you know, especially if campaigns hit six figures, it's really easy to, to add that stuff on to when you're below that, it becomes very hard because sure. you have to cover production costs of the book. You have to cover, um, printing, coloring, shipping, shipping lettering, um, yeah, logo yeah, design, yeah. all that stuff. Um, unless you're like, a like a one man band type thing, which I'm not, I'm, I mean, I've taken courses in these things, but I don't, you know, I don't letter anymore. I, I don't make logos anymore. Yeah, I maybe do a logo sketch at best, but that's about it. Yeah. I, I wanted to talk about, um, the perks. This is the limited edition one, uh, which is basically you guys are going to get everything plus some awesome enamel pins, right? Um, yeah, we're going to, there's also something else that's going to be in that, that we're going to talk about later. Um, it's a secret for now. It's a secret for now. So there is something else that's coming in this tier. Um, but we'll, we'll save that for a later date, but I would advise everybody to take advantage of that while those are still there. Um, if you had signed up for our newsletter, um, you should, which MailChimp has been kind of dodgy lately. Um, you should have a tier, for your neighbor's aunt's niece. And in that tier, you will basically get the everything tier minus the buttons. Since there's no buttons in it because they're limited. That pins, tier, pins, pins I'm sorry, pins. pins. You, you get that at a discount. The enamel pins are limited to 500 because we had to do a, a, we had to make a minimum quantity order because we were doing, we weren't asking them for just one pin. We were asking them for a set of four. Right. So um, there's the that. Closet, like but, stuff. If you had signed up, you actually have access to a secret tier, which is basically this tier with the um, sketch at a discount. So a lot of people, have t that's probably one of our top selling um, things. With our sketches, though, we did listen to people in the preview of our campaign and we added some characters. We added this tier, too, which is a super popular tier. This is we had this tier in there taking it out and then when we previewed a campaign people were asking for it and luckily yeah. we listened to uh the fans on it that's been one of our top selling tiers i think it is our top selling tier or one of at least our top three so uh i, I advise anybody running a campaign if you have an audience and you have enough people to talk to about it you know preview preview your campaign with them that's a uh, very customer service based info and if you're able to accommodate them do you know it'll pay off yeah for, for sure i would say you know i'm a big fan of enamel pins um and i think a lot of people in cg love the swag and this is something that we haven't really seen on campaigns um especially the the bigger campaigns we haven't seen enamel pins i think that's something unique you guys are doing mm. i understand there's some like glitter aspect to them so that's yeah. extra so you guys are getting this is limited edition special stuff. So definitely check those one out if you guys haven't backed yet. Um, and there's, to... again, something secret we're adding to that, that. Yeah. You know, so you're not just getting everything here. There is one other thing included that we're going to, you know, I talk know about that. later. That's awesome. <clears throat> that is sick. Uh, I, love, I love the pin aspect. And, uh, yeah, that Mer I'm glad you guys listened to the audience, that Merlion cover with the ash can. Um, is awesome. That's the one I'm probably going to be picking up. Mm, thank you. Look at that cover. It's sick. We're actually, I don't know how we're going to do it, but people have been asking for a Merlion t-shirt. So we're trying to reach out to some people now in the t-shirt type business. And yeah. I would like, I don't know. I got, we'll see what I can do, but if I could get like a gold, like the line artwork of the Merlion off this cover, but kind of transferred into like a, a that gold vinyl, on a t-shirt i think that would wow, be awesome yeah, that'd be cool but it's just a line artwork like um like say a green t-shirt or mm -hmm. something like that i think that would be cool i don't know we're gonna i'm gonna look into that and see how possible that is you know that's the good thing good about idea. cg campaigns you can kind of you know modify you can make the product that you know people want you know so i hear people saying i'd love that on a t-shirt so we're gonna like try to see what we can do with that and maybe add that to the campaign at a later yeah. date that's the best thing about doing these uh crowdfunders is 
you know, you could put a perk up there if you're able to create it. And then if no one gets that perk, then it's no detriment because you don't have to make that stuff. So you, you can be really experimental with these campaigns. Um, and then if there's a big, you know, calling for that, that tier and people buy the hell out of it, then it's all the benefit to you uh, as the creator. Mm-hmm. So the, these things, you know, crowdfunding is risky, but and it's experimental. Um, but, you know, it can work out great um, and make cool things uh, like the, the pins and all the other stuff that people are putting out there. Here's your uh, this little sketch thing. So you can also get a character sketch. And Shane Davis has one of the coolest signatures in uh, comics. It's really cool. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you cool. make me feel weird now. Um, <laughs> but the character inspiration for the signature, man. Oh, it was um, Jin Kazama's tattoo from Tekken 2. What? Nobody got the reference? Look at Phil looked at me. He got it. <laughs> yeah, Tekken. Uh, I got a lot of friends that play Tekken. I'm talking like Devil Jin type tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah. Before Devil then, Jin. they they Tekken 4 kind of neutered the character and reset everything. Yeah, Shane, you're a, a gamer. Yeah, a bit, but I mean, I grew up with going through the whole Nintendo 60, you know, not 64, but just the old Nintendo Atari into arcades into You're always like talking about Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I like to quick play that, you know, when I'm kind of lagging on a page or something, I can do a quick play. Either have a good game, have a bad game with the Call of Duty Battle Royale thing, and then just put the controller down and... So Warzone, you're, playing, you're playing Warzone? Yeah, I have been. Um, dude, it's gotten... I, that's Call of Duty is so weird. If you stop, like you actually get worse, like really <laughs> bad, quick. I, I don't know yeah. what it is. And like um, they did the new DLC and all of a sudden you're playing and everybody's killing it. You. like i'm getting shot down out of the sky like a like a, and then i'm parachuting and then i think i'm safe and then it's the same motherfucker that was shooting me down just trailing behind me it was like Dude, such yeah. bitches are in there right now it's like jesus you know i was watching uh i i my today was my day off so i was lettering a bunch of pages for passion for drawings doom fate um mm. i letter like uh five or six pages and while i was lettering i had uh Dr. Disrespect stream on, who's an awesome streamer, and he was doing this big Warzone tournament today. Uh, and they made it pretty far in the tournament. But if you guys ever watch streamers, watch Dr. Disrespect. He's on YouTube now because he got banned from Twitch without any explanation. Yeah, thing. I've been trying to follow that, but it's so weird. We're not getting the information about how that happened or why that happened. So. He says he doesn't know still. And I don't know if that's true or whatever, but I mean, the, the, the guy's getting, he got um, two, maybe one or two $400 super chats today and one $500 super chat. And the guy is pulling in 45,000 viewers, a live stream. And he played for six hours today. Mm. And he's just nonstop. Like, <laughs> he can't even read all the super chats that he gets insane the guy's a national icon there, there was something with him that i think even robert kirkman did a deal with him like skybound supposed to do a tv show or a tv series or documentary or something yeah with him. A, a that was before ago, he got canceled yeah i think last year he signed with skybound but nothing ever came out of it so i don't know if they're still working on something yeah you know. mm. but yeah the guy's a character he's awesome one of my favorites Go sub. Mm. Um, yeah, guys, check out Starlight Cats. You guys know all about it. I wanted to, you know, some of some of the people that may be subbed to me that aren't subbed to you guys or, or know other things about this book. I wanted to bring that to them. We get a lot of replays on our not a lot, but for us uh, mm. on uh, on our you know streams afterwards. So this will stay up. But I've had a pretty good number of people in the chat for this stream. Um, so thanks for tuning in. We got Steve, the real Steve Die, uh, in the stream makes a a crazy appearance, screaming spoilers as he always does. That's my <laughs> uncle Steve Die, mm. um, not dead, as some some people would say. Steve uh, Die helped us out with our exclusive trading card to everybody that signed up for our newsletter. Did he? 
Yes, did? he did. My uncle's getting around there. That's good. He is getting around. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, Great guy. Yeah, no, everybody else, thank you for, for tuning in. Um, other than that, check out the Lost Pages as well. I was going to show this to you, Shane. I think you've seen it before. But, if, you know, you guys wanted, we were talking about doing the fold-out posters. Go, go full uh, screen. There you go. We have... Yeah. Primo Print did those for us, and they come folded, pre-folded, mm. 11 by 17, and they could do it bigger than this. Um, you know, we might try that uh, for later campaigns, but this one is like a perfect fit for the mailers because uh, it would mm. just, you know, go in there with the comic. Um, I'll probably hit you up for that information when I we mean, get there. We gave him the information. <laughs> oh, we yeah. gave you that. No. Primo, we gave him Primo. Oh. Yeah, it was Primo Print. But there's a specific thing about... Um, primo print when you're going to do the posters like that mm -hmm. they don't have like a poster i mean we'll talk about it, but they don't have a poster setting it's in basically in their pamphlets so this is technically a pamphlet oh i get what you did there so yeah, you yeah. can't like search for posters and that's i emailed them and asked them and they're like oh yeah just do it like this so they're awesome customer service um and everything's rolling smoothly with the lost pages i just talked to mixum the printer about uh, shipping everything together, that's going to be really cool. Mixum's awesome customer service. Uh, and they're also going to be, which is crazy, they're going to be printing some of the books over in the UK because they're a UK-based company, but they have printers everywhere. And then those books are going to be shipped to Simon Bisley. Simon Bisley is going to sign them, and then they're going to pick the books back up from Simon Bisley and ship them over to here so we could get them out to you guys. So... That's amazing that they're doing that for us. So shout outs to them. Um, hmm. And there's still four Simon Bisley signed packs left on the Lost Pages campaign. Uh, check it out. Grab it. And, Guys, uh, everybody go check that out. Because uh, Simon, uh, maybe if you're lucky, comes to one or two American cons a year. So yeah. it's not that no easy to get No cons anyway. Yeah, plus yeah, no cons, even, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I met him... Uh, at a wizard world years ago probably like five years ago now and uh he was awesome he was doing shots with fans at, on the convention floor i don't even know if that's a, if that's legal but uh he was doing it hmm cool. i'm sure like simon bisley makes sure everything he does is legal i'm sure that <laughs> yeah i don't so, i don't think that's uh yeah that's definitely not simon the biz yeah yeah Everybody in chat. <laughs> the yeah, biz so will give you the biz I, well, that's what I hear from you, but uh, I've heard he can try to get a bar fight. Is all. Yeah, yeah, I would love to uh, see that. He almost got into a fight with Dan Frega just because he was drunk, and they were drinking together. It's a great story. Yeah, Dan. Dan is streaming right now, so we're gonna wrap up this one. You guys can shoot over to Frega's stream. Are you guys gonna stream later tonight, Shane? <laughs> Uh, probably. I'm not sure. Like I've been going on so many other people's shows. I feel like I need to do a stream tonight. So hopefully I'll be on. But Ethan said something last night when we got off that, hey, we'll do another one tomorrow night. So I'm not so sure. I'm either going to be on our show or Ethan's show. One or the other, I think, tonight. Because I need to do a stream tonight because I usually don't stream on Thursdays because of the Jack show. Oh, yeah, for sure. So go sub to Talking and Drawing with Shane Davis. And then also <coughs> sub to Frega Boom and uh, this channel as well. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to uh, refresh and see if you got a backer. Uh, let me see. audience. So we're at 996, 396 here and 397. We got a backer. Yeah, it lags. Like it, we got a backer, but it doesn't actually show the money. But yeah, I don't know why we. Somebody said it's a bank transaction thing. Yeah, uh, I didn't. Well, this is weird because it seems like you have had that backer for a while and it still hasn't updated. Yeah. Well, my uh, in my you know I think it happens the like the bank has to transfer the money, so it takes a while for the money to load. But it's kind of weird that it still hasn't gone up. But yeah, proof is here. We got Shane Davis one backer. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for uh, checking out the campaign and uh, look forward to news about updates with the campaign. We have some good ideas. Well, not good ideas. We have some things that we're wanting to uh, bring to the table on this and you guys will be pleasantly surprised. So, uh, you know, definitely if you can't back it, share it, you know, let people know it exists and uh, do that with every CG campaign. Um, 
you know, try to fight the counter narrative that's going on right now in mainstream comics with CG, you know, mm -hmm. um, don't, you know, you as uh, CGers, as, as supporters of CG, I mean, you guys, you guys are the wind in the sails and on all these campaigns and you guys can, if you don't like things people say, if you don't like what the mainstream media says about you or mainstream comics, you know, just share some campaigns you know, um, advertise campaigns in CG. It's a big, it's, it's the biggest push you can do. Of course, yeah. backing too. Uh, don't, don't, don't think, don't back a campaign. But, uh, if for some reason, you know, it's, uh, you don't have the, the funds or, um, you're not getting paid for another month, still share that campaign, let other people know it exists and push back, to, uh, you know, the mainstream media and, and talking about all their, successful crowdfunders but never talking about cg crowdfunders mm -hmm. for sure no that's uh definitely definitely share share it out and i'm going to end the stream actually on your guys's uh trailer so mm. oh, thank you thank that? you thank you everybody's gonna have a seizure now um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks for coming on uh shane and yanzi and uh, thanks for having us we're gonna if i could play this i think my computer froze Oh well, my if God. you can't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Phil. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> my uh, Chrome froze, so I'll be back, I guess, because I have to <laughs> close this out. All right. All right. All right. Well, so thanks can. for having us on, Phil. You have a good one. Yes, you too, brother. Did it freeze? Freeze for for real? I guess it alive? froze. It froze. He's gonna have to restart everything. So you and me can leave now, honey. All right. All <laughs> See right. ya, Phil. Hey, everybody. So I am going to uh, show their 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 trailer because uh, my my uh, Google Chrome just froze. So let's watch that. Growing up can be rough. It isn't always easy to make friends. Sometimes I feel alone. But then I met Barnaby and learned the truth about all cats on Earth, that they need my help. But you guys bullies it? are trying to stop our fun. Together with the Starlight Cats, I can collect all the jewels so the Great Merlion will rise about this again. Song. Evil alien rats called the Barrican live to devour all life forms. In this action adventure 48 page graphic novel, Rebecca is swept up with the Starlight Cats into an intergalactic conflict. Together, they have to find the power to stop the Barricans, who are determined to conquer Earth. Only Rebecca and this elite team of cosmic powered felines can summon the magic needed to end this universal infestation. This is Starlight Cats Book One Merlion Rising. Back this project today only on Indiegogo. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Go uh, go watch another stream. See ya. Thanks, Andino, for watching three streams and drawing. I'm going to go see what...